They're over. You wanna get some fresh air? Wanna go on a walk? Let's go. Hello, and this is Matt Hoots with Sawhorse, and this is another episode of Fresh Air Fridays. And I've got my buddy Oliver here. We're gonna go for a quick walk, and we're also gonna go over ventilation, talk about different types of ventilation, why it's important, and why it is important to get fresh air into your house. I've decided to start up my Fresh Air Friday series mainly because indoor air quality is very important. I was actually sick recently because of indoor air quality. Went to a client's house that had poor air quality, actually had too much humidity, therefore had mold and I got sick. So I wanted to talk a little bit about ventilation and you know, first of all, what is air quality? Air quality is basically having fresh air. I mean, you want to have clean air in your house. Clean air means that you don't have humidity that's too low means that it's not too high, it means you don't have VOCs, which are volatile organic compounds in your house. It also means you don't have a lot of particulates in the air. So just basically you want a, a good environment where you can breathe easy and not be sick. Um, I lost about two weeks worth of work and it wasn't pleasant. You know, I had a bad reaction to mold and um, you know, luckily we had it remediated. And this was not necessarily because of just humidity. It was because it was a pipe that um, burst and uh, unfortunately flooded the basement and had lots of mold growth everywhere. Now, if we would have had whole house dehumidification installed before we started, and again, we haven't got started on this project, then it probably wouldn't have been an issue and this would have been tr able to help some of it out. Now, I know he is getting bigger, isn't he? Just had somebody come by and notice that our dog was not a puppy anymore. So when it comes to ventilation, there's different types of ventilation strategies inside your house. And um, this is inspired by a post that I'll share with later um, uh, from a friend on LinkedIn. We're actually gonna do a screenshot of that and kind of talk through that. But you know, most of you guys know exhaust ventilation. Exhaust ventilation comes in the form, um, you know, bath fans, exhaust fans, also fans inside your house. To, uh, ventilation above your stove, that's, that's all exhaust ventilation. So exhaust ventilation is taking the air in from inside your house and basically pushing it out. Since we're on the subject of ventilation, what do you see wrong with this picture? Green real estate agent, Christopher Matos Rogers, pointed this out on a post on LinkedIn and we're going to share the answer of what's wrong with this picture at the very end of this video. Um, there's also something called balanced ventilation. Balanced ventilation is similar to exhaust ventilation where it takes some of that air outside of your house, but also brings fresh air in at the same time. So since you're bringing equal amounts of supply and exhaust into your house at the same time, that's why it's called balanced ventilation. You also have it where you're bringing just fresh air into your house, and this creates a slightly positive pressure inside your house. So if you have a leaky building envelope, what this does is kind of pushes some of the outside or the nasty air to the outside from inside your house. This is more of like supply ventilation, bringing some of that fresh air into your house. All these are good strategies. Um, honestly, on my house, a lot of the houses that we're designing, like the 1920s house and some of my other clients' houses, we're looking at a little bit of all three strategies. So with regards to bathrooms in the kitchen, we are going to have that exhaust ventilation. Um, a lot of times we're gonna put some sensors on it. So if there's too much humidity inside the house, or if you have um, particulates in the air, PM 2.5, it's going to trigger the sensor and therefore some of the ventilation can come on. There's also monitors that you can install inside your house to, to help with some of this. Um, other types of vents that you, you'll have in your house that can be below the slab or below the uh, vapor or air barrier, you've got radon vents. These are, these are vents that can take the radon outside of your house and keep your air cleaner so you don't get cancer from the radon. Um, so that's, that's mainly the, the, the type of exhaust ventilation that, that, that we put in our, in our projects. Now, balanced ventilation is going to be an ERV. And if you want to see how an ERV works, I did an unboxing. Just look at that icon in the upper right-hand corner. Click on that, and you'll see a full description of how an ERV works. Unboxed, taken apart, and installed so you can see how that works. Thanks again for watching this video and for you making it all the way to this point, we are going to allow you to enter to get a prize. Make a comment in the section below. Hopefully it's a good comment. And what we're going to do is do a random drawing using an app that I have um, in 30 days. 
from now. So you have 30 days to, to make the comment. And whoever wins that is going to get a pair of masks. And this is worth about $40 worth of masks. So uh, all you have to do is make a quick comment what you think about ventilation. And we're going to give something that where you can breathe easier in public. Uh, again, this is sponsored by, by Zanano Mask. It's zanonomask.com. Thanks. Now in ERV, what it does is it takes air from the outside, um, brings it in so you have that fresh air. But say the humidity outside here in Georgia is 100%. Um, which is really high, you really want to target somewhere between 60, um, maybe down to 40%. Um, our sweet spot in our house is 50%, 49%. So if you, if you want to keep around that, if you're sucking in humid air from the outside, on the supply side, what's going to happen is it's going to make the humidity inside of your house go up. And ERV, what it does is it exchanges some of that moisture from the outside in the inside through this this core is called an enthalpic core and what this core does is it takes the 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 energy basically the heat so if it's um really hot outside and it's cool inside you're not taking all of your cool air from the inside and blowing it out it's 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 cooling down that air as it's coming in but because it has a permeable membrane where the air doesn't cross over but the vapor can it also exchanges the vapor so as that drier air from your house is going out it exchanges with that moist air that's coming in so you don't have you know 100% or even 80% relative humidity coming into your house. So that's the basic premise for an ERV is it's a way to get fresh air, it's also a way to get some of the bad air out of your house without having a huge energy penalty. Because otherwise what you're doing is you're sucking air into your house if you're doing one of these other ventilation strategies and it's not conditioned and if it's not conditioned, that means you're paying to condition it, to climatize it, to make your indoor environment just perfect. Let's talk about a third strategy. And a lot of people are aware of ERVs, but when it comes to dehumidifiers, if you're, if you're sucking that air in, or even if you're going with the ventilation only strategy, if you don't have dehumidification, especially here in the South, that's a huge issue. So what we recommend is having a whole house dehumidifier that can condition all of the air in your house. Now, these are set to work all year round. So in your shoulder seasons, and you know, I've got two shoulders here, but your shoulder seasons are your spring and fall seasons. Now with those seasons, you wanna make sure that your AC is running, but it's not going to be running the condenser, which is typically in the summertime, which pulls all that moisture out of the air. So a supplemental dehumidifier is going to take that moisture out of the air in the spring and fall and keep that relative humidity low. If you don't have one of those in your house, then during those seasons, say if it is raining outside, but it's also cool outside, then the issue that you have is you're going to have high humidity inside your house, which can cause mold to grow. It also creates a, a climate where pathogens can grow, also dust mites. And these are all things that can trigger allergies inside your house. So. It's not always the stuff that's outside that's going to trigger the allergies. It's conditions inside your house that you want to take care of. So even in Atlanta where we have lots of pollution, why do you think people call it fresh air when you go outside? Well, the reason is, is even though there's pollution on the outside of the house, the indoor air can be two to five times as polluted as the outdoor air, according to the EPA. Now, given the fact that we spend at least 90% of our time inside, that's a huge issue. That means you are exposed to toxic air more often than not, unless you're working outside. Now, just because the inside air is more polluted, potentially, doesn't mean there aren't pollutants from the outside that could affect indoor air quality. Now, if you live in the West or even in the South, uh, where you know you have, either have smoke because of wildfires or in the South where it's pollen season, you have a lot of pollen coming in the house, if you are counting on makeup air just through natural ventilation or it's not filtered, you're basically bringing a lot of those toxic elements into your house that can trigger allergies. So what we'd recommend if you are going to bring that fresh air in from the outside, make sure one, that it is filtered with at least a MERV 13 filter. I know in some areas of the country that is standard, where in other parts it's not quite met with the same rigorous codes. Um, in the southeast, another thing that we recommend, in addition to that, filtration is also pre-dehumidification. So if you are going to bring that air, fresh air into your house, make sure it's run through a ventilating dehumidifier first, 
and that way you don't have to worry about too much humidity being brought into your house which can affect indoor air quality. So just to recap, we've, we talked about three different ventilation strategies, exhaust, supply ventilation, and also ba balanced ventilation. So I wanna share with you a funny thing that I saw on LinkedIn today that one of my friends posted. And um, at first I thought it was kind of silly. Then I was like, you know what? Maybe this isn't so silly. Maybe this is uh, borderline unethical, what they try to do in this photo. So I want you guys to take a look at this and let me know what you think. All right, in conclusion, we promised to share what is wrong with this image. Uh, I'm not even sure to be laughing or disappointed with this. So if you look at this, look at the exhaust. So we just talked about exhaust ventilation, but look at the range hood. Um, or is that a range hood? It looks like something they either painted on the wall as a decal or somebody photoshopped a range hood into the picture. So I'm all for like people putting fake furniture and staging, doing virtual staging, but doing virtual edits to a an actual image you know, showing that there actually is ventilation and there is an appliance that is not going to be there when they buy the house. I don't know. I, I kind of think that that's borderline and I would not consider that ethical. But again, I don't know all the rules of real estate. So I'll have Christopher let us know what he thinks about that. So the bottom line is as we make houses tighter, we have a tighter building envelope, we have a definite need for ventilation. But with ventilation can come its own, have its own problems. We make sure that the air that's coming in is filtered and also preconditioned so we don't have any of those issues. If you guys like this video and want to see more videos like this with me and Oliver talking about fresh air, go ahead and hit the like button and hit the subscribe so you can see more videos like this in the future. If you have questions about ventilation where you want to learn something or you have a specific scenario at your house or office or building and want to know how you can solve these issues, leave a comment in the section below. We'll make sure that our audience Helps answer that question for you. See you guys next time. So not only am I getting some fresh air here, Oliver's getting to go for a walk. So Oliver, what do you think about this walk so far? Oh, is that what you think? All right, looks the camera. Must like it. <laughs>